Well, we're here we are live from the Zero Project 2023, and I'm here with uh, Luke Zelder Low or Zelder Lou? As you wish. As you wish. As you wish. Caroline. As you wish. Well, I'm Caroline Casey, and I'm just going to do a quick audio description. Um, I'm a white woman, 51. Uh, and wearing a ridiculously green suit with a black turtleneck green for the Zero Project. Okay. Luke, would you like to describe what you're looking like today? Yes, I'm a 65-year-old <laughs> man, and I wear a gray, uh, a gray outfit today that okay. goes with my hair. Because I'm going to go very well with green <laughs> as well. Um, Luke, will you just explain to people, I know that you say you have just retired, which I think is not true, and we'll come back to that at the end. Okay. But what was your previous role, and what are you here to talk to us about today? Well, uh, I, I was Secretary General of ESPD, the European Network of Support Service for Persons uh, with Disabilities. Uh, but today I'm here to talk about uh, the European ESF Plus, European Social Fund Programme, which is very important for the coming five, six years. The European Union will invest 100 billion to, um, to promote social inclusion and social programs. Okay, hold on now here. 100 billion? 100 billion. Okay. But of course that uh, has to be spread over 27 member states. Okay. And over all the different uh, social programs uh, that uh, that these countries uh, might have, but still, it is a significant amount of money. And the good news is that 25% of this budget has to be spent on social inclusion, okay. inclusion of people uh, living in poverty, children living in poverty, uh, persons living in institutions, deinstitutionalization, development of community living across the European uh, continent, and homelessness. These are the three key areas on which uh, these 25% uh, of that budget should be invested over the coming years. And with these three, I mean, there's significant issues like institutionalization yep. and homelessness and child poverty. Yep. And when we look at community living how do you look at these in a multi-layered way? How is that happening? I mean, are you learning from the past that you can't look at them in silos? Tell us a little bit about the way that you're convening the power of, of change. Yeah. Um, community living is, uh, is, of course, linked to your economic status. Yeah. We know that disability and poverty are interlinked. Yeah. We know that many persons with disabilities, especially with mental health challenges, uh, are homeless uh, and live in homelessness. So these different areas are interconnected. Mm -hmm. So we have to look at these three different uh, domains in, in one go, so to say, if we want to be successful. If you want to successfully deinstitutionalize, it is important that people have a home, a house, in the community, that they find their way into the labor market so that they don't end up in poverty. So all these elements are interlinked. And the good thing is that in this new ESF Plus program, European Social Fund program, they are interlinked. And from a policy perspective, the European Union and all the different member states recognize the importance of looking at these different elements in one go. And more importantly, is it not having the disability community as part of the design process of all of this? Is that, I mean, that is what's paramount importance. Yes, to look how they interconnect with each other, but also the, the voice and the experience of disabled people and their families, no? Absolutely. Uh, I agree with you for 200%, uh, Caroline. Uh, and we have that in the ESF regulation, the legal framework that mm -hmm. organizes uh, the spending of all this, uh, this money. Uh, the different projects, the different activities should be developed, designed in cooperation with uh, persons with a disability. Uh, the partnership principle is all over the place in, in this program. So uh, it is built in that organizations that represent persons with a disability, that represent homeless people, that represent families are part of the game, part of the strategy, part of the discussions to implement all these uh, activities. Yeah. So like, this is a lot of money and this is a huge opportunity. How are we not going to make the same mistakes as before? How can we learn from what we didn't do before to ensure that every single euro, whether it's billions or millions, goes to deliver impact? Like, what, are you going, what do you see or what are you hopeful for in this particular move? One interesting element, well, there are many interesting elements, but one 
very interesting element is that uh, the European institutions have set up a community of practice. Okay, what does, and what that, does that actually mean? That like the ambition is to bring together all the managing authorities from the different countries, together with other stakeholders, to wow. exchange ideas, to learn from one another, to develop models of good practice, and to challenge and inspire each other. So we can learn from what works in the field. And what works in Ireland, it might also work in Belgium or in Germany or in Italy. So the community of practice is about exchanging these models, exchanging what we can learn from one another, and having a real impact on the lives of people, because that is the overarching ambition. Because, like, let's be honest, one of the things that get in the way is the lack of real collaboration, like real, proper collaboration, which requires us to compromise, to communicate well, to share, and it's difficult. So, from, I mean, you've been in, in the work of collaborations all your life. Um, what do you think is going to be key to making this happen, to have collaboration that's going to deliver on the ground through the 27 um, states that we're going to be working with? What do you see as being the successful way of... I think that it is absolutely essential to understand the needs of the different stakeholders. Like the managing authorities, okay. the authorities of these different countries, they want to implement effective programs. Uh -huh. But quite often they struggle with how to do that. So it starts with having an open conversation with all these authorities and bring in the perspective of the people themselves, of course, and those that develop the support systems. And if you make that triangle work. Authorities, okay. the people themselves, the families, the, the, those that represent the people, and those that develop the services. If you make work that triangle, then you yeah. might come up with, uh, with effective and solutions that really work in practice. So this sort of triumvirate of power, yeah. essentially. Yeah. And that is what we try to do with these communities of practice the COPs, as we call them. Okay. And uh, our first event is planned for, uh, let's say, in two weeks from now, the 7th of, uh, the 7th of March. We have a first online event. And, and we is will that representing from all 27 nations? Or yep. Yeah. Wow. Yep. Yep. Uh, authorities from the 27 uh, member states of the European Union are invited, but also NGOs, also representatives of uh, uh, the different actors, as I just described, and can participate. Wow. And we will look into the difficulties uh, where we are today uh -huh. and how we can inspire each other, how we can help each other in doing the right thing. And we're talking about difficulties today because today is really difficult. It and is. It is. We were just talking before we came on camera that one of the negative outputs of the pandemic is sort yep. of the re-medicalization yep. of human beings living with disability, yep. the idea of over-indexing on vulnerability, institutionalization yes. again. So where where's the hope here now? Like, how do you see us getting... Because it's really tough. So how do you see us getting... We saw we saw it at the start of the uh, of the Corona pandemic that indeed the medical aspect, in a way, overruled uh, all the other uh, aspects: uh, autonomy, living on your own in the community, and so on. So it, it was in a way overruled, and and the medical approach took over again. We have to push that back, and that is only possible by coming up with innovative models that give the the, the steering power of their support system back to the people that want and need the support. And uh, it is, again, about developing innovative approaches and, and learning on how we can, can do that. But uh, indeed, we saw across Europe, and I'm sure on other continents yeah. as well, remedicalization yeah. in the thinking, in the talking. Uh, Non-resuscitation yeah. clause. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's, it's incomprehensible that that's where we got to. And in 2020, you couldn't imagine that that would yeah, be real. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And now we see other effects, of course, like, uh, well, the, the, the war in Ukraine has, has um, yeah, a very, very important impact on social services across the European continent. Authorities hesitate in investing in social yeah, exactly. because there are so many other needs. Uh, yeah. We see high inflation, so rising poverty, energy cost, which is going up, more people end up in poverty. So institutionalization quite often becomes, for people, the only solution that is left. Oh, so it, we really have to look at where we are in society today, 
what the new challenges are, and then through exchange, through cooperation, develop new answers. The good news is there is a bit of money available in this ESF uh, program, and if we, if we manage to organize the exchange in a smart way, then uh, that will lead to, to real change, I hope, I think. Yep. Okay, I have a tiny bit more time with you. Can I ask your personal opinion? Do you think we will ever be able to change the reality of institutionalization? Do you think that that's coming or is that us being really idealistic? And, and yeah, I mean, it's ended or remodel it or do you see that? Do you see that changing on your future? It still is an uphill battle. It still is an uphill battle. Um, I think that we only will be able to end institutionalization if we empower the people themselves, if we invest more in families, in family support, yes, exactly. and if we, through innovation, manage to bring the support to the people instead of the people to the support. That is what we should, should try to do, and I, I think the progress, it, it, goes v it goes slowly, too slowly, but we make progress. Well, you have an audience here, and you're talking about radical collaboration, I think, through this, the way you're talking about these communities of practice. For anybody listening today, or they're here, what, what is your ask of anybody um, as you move forward on planning yep. to spend this 25 billion because that's, <laughs> well, <laughs> that's a big spend. <laughs> it is, it is, it is quite something indeed, yes. Well, to the audience that we have here um, in, in Vienna, but also online, uh, if people want to cooperate, please let us know, let me know. It is the uh, Lithuanian uh, ESF uh, Plus agency that is implementing the program, okay. ESFA. Uh, they, they're doing a, a great job, I think, so they, they implement this program. I work there as a thematic expert now. I support them uh, a little bit. So if you, uh, if you feel like contributing, please do so. And let's not forget, we want to work with the authorities here. It is, it is not something in a small niche that we want to do. Uh -huh. We want to have an impact on the public structures. Uh -huh. We want to work with authorities to make change. Yep. So I, I want to ask you, I know you say you're retired as the Secretary General, but you're not retired at all, right? We, you know, I just tell us a little bit uh, briefly what you're doing, but also to other people who are trying to tackle these big issues and are starting a career out or a social innovator. You've been in this space for a long time. What is your advice to anybody trying to drive change for the inclusion of people with disabilities? Well, let me look back first. Um, I had a wonderful job. <laughs> I had a great job. And you know why? I was paid. Yeah. I was paid to work on human rights. Can you imagine? No, who I can't. Who is, who is paid to work on the implementation of human rights? So that, that's a fantastic job. So I did it with, with great pleasure. Um, throughout my career, and now uh, I'm retired, yes, but no. I, I tried to work with, uh, with uh, the colleagues in, uh, in Lithuania on this community of practice. Uh, I tried to support the, the Zero Project team uh, a little yeah. bit, and I'm also president of a uh, supported employment agency in, uh, in Flanders. We have 250 job coaches uh, active across uh, Flanders. So, uh, and busy. that keeps me busy, <laughs> that keeps me busy, yeah. yeah. Well, listen, I just want to say a huge thank you to you um, for your continued service and commitment. I mean, we met many, many years ago. Yes, indeed. And I think you look younger now. I don't know if that my eyesight is worse, but <laughs> it is such a pleasure. And once again, reaching out your hand for cooperation and collaboration. And thank you for your leadership. Thank um, you. Really, thank you very thank much. Thank you. And uh, I think that there is only one, uh, one answer, and that is cooperation. Cooperation. Yeah. Yep. Thank you so much, Luke. Thank you, Caroline. Thank you. Well, quick summary of very important messages again right here. Um, the European Social Fund Plus uh, will provide 100 billion of euros and 25% of that will have to go to deinstitutionalization, helping homeless for homeless programs and uh, pro uh, preventing child poverty. So what we heard here is what we need so that goes all together with people with disabilities, we need radical cooperation uh, and collaboration. Um, you said, give the steering power back to the people and involve people with disabilities into the process so that the whole program and the money that is spent 
is being spent the right way. Um, and you, you're building communities of practice by involving authorities of all seven, 27 member states and also communities and the people. And you, I, I wrote here, we want improve public structure. And then I crossed out want and s put here have. Yeah, we have impact on public structure. And with that, a big change can happen. Let's be part of it.